Hey everybody, today Rado runs through his board game collection 2015 update. Yikes, oh my gosh, this is going to be insane. You may recall last year, I, around this time, did a run through of all 300 plus games that were on my shelf. Took almost five hours, it was crazy, absolutely insane, it took me many, many days to film it. And ever since then, people have been asking every once in a while, hey, how do you feel about doing an update? And I've always thought, ah, it's insane, because I was a dummy originally and did not actually keep track of what games I'd actually recorded. And I didn't want to spend all the time in the world actually having to figure out what's new since then. But then, um, what was her name? Moira Matheson actually started a thread about this on my guild at Board Game Geek, and we chat about it. Hi, Moira. Hi, Moira's daughter, whose name I don't know, but hello to both of you. And, um, you know, so we talked about it a bit, and that inspired uh, another Rotter Runs Through fan, Mike Risley, to go through all five hours of those previous videos and catalog every single game I had mentioned. And after Mike did that, well, I, I had no choice. So I just spent this morning actually figuring out what's new, Magoo, what um, have I added and taken off of that wall. There are currently 316 games up there. From the last time I did this run through, 70 have been axed and 77 have been added. So today I'm going to talk about the 77 new games that are on that wall. And I'm going to try and go quick because I'll try to keep this under an hour, fingers crossed. Although if you know me, I tend to pontificate, but I will try to be quick. I will try to be succinct for anybody who would like to know about the 70 that were lost or, you know, not lost, sold, traded, you know, given away as gifts, that kind of stuff. There's a list down in the show notes below and a link where you can actually go to my profile on BoardGameGeek where I've actually written up the reasons that I've gotten rid of every game I've ever had. So, um, without further ado, let's get going. Oh my goodness, let's just start. Let's go the opposite way. On the last time I started that way and went this way, Let's see. Now, what I've done is I've pulled out all the games in question so I can find them really easy. Let's just start right here and start going. Right off the bat, we have Kashgar Handler der uh, Seidenstrasse, which I'll be honest, I haven't played yet. I don't know anything about it. And I hadn't picked this up previously because even though it's a fairly well-respected, you know, um, trading goods, caravan-style Euro game from Cosmos, it's only available auf Deutsch in German. Um, even though, and, and supposedly it's a really great game, you know, right up, you know, Jen's in my alley. We really wanted to play it. And as it turns out, there is a, um, a guy on Board Game Geek. Uh, there's a thread. I'll put the link to the thread right there, who has actually gone through and done a full translation of everything. I've now got this game translated, although I've yet to play it. Can't wait to give it a go uh, because I've heard nothing but good stuff about it. That is Kashgar. All right, moving on. XCOM. Now, I'm not going to spend any time talking about this because I've already done a full run through for it. In a nutshell, this is a very, very interesting, very neat real time cooperative game based on the classic PC game franchise that requires you use a digital app who plays kind of a um, you know, a, an evil dungeon master trying to destroy all the players who are trying to save the world from alien invaders. You can watch my run through for more. Let's see, continuing on. Ah, here we go. Zhang Guo. Lovely game from What's Your Game. This was definitely one of the heaviest games that I played of 2015. And in fact, it's so heavy that it's still kind of on the bubble. I'm not sure. I need to play this another time or two with Jen because it was almost too heavy for her and just broke her down. And Jen's super smart. So that can give you an idea of just how um, awesome Zanglo is. Although you can go watch her, the run through for more. All right. Let's see, I think I've done run-throughs for almost, no, okay. Capo to Copy, a very, very cool Prohibition-era mobster-themed filler dice rolling game from Steve Finn. Check out the run-through. Very, very neat, fun little game. Like it a lot. Uruk 2, Uruk 2, Die Entwicklung geht weiter, is a civilization building card game. Uh, basically a revamp of an earlier one that really streamlined a lot of mechanisms. We enjoyed it. We thought it was actually a pretty neat game, but you can watch my run-through for more. Uh, let's see. Have not done one for this, though. Here we are with Lagoon, uh, Land of Druids. 
We have actually played this game. We thought it was very, very cool. I'll probably be doing a run through with, for this in the next week or two, maybe. Very, very, it's a gorgeous tile laying game where every tile has special powers. And as you're putting these tiles down, you're make, making the whole world shift around in lots of really cool, unexpected ways as you gauge in this kind of um, tug of war area control game for um, the Land of Druids. Very pretty, gorgeous, fun, smart, smart game. Watch for the run through for that soon. Alrighty. Hobbit Tales. Now, I don't know much about this. This was actually a gift from a fan because he knows that Jen loves all things Tolkien. And he also knows that Jen and I have been looking for a fun storytelling game that we could play together. And that's what this is. This, in this game, basically players are hobbits who are hanging around at the Green Dragon Inn, spinning mighty tales of you know goblins and lost treasure and, and um, dragons and, and, um, and all things hobbitess. And supposedly, well, I have no I can't say if it's good or not, but I'm looking forward to giving a try as soon as Jen gets back from her trip to the States, which is just a little bit over a week now. So excited. Okay, moving on. Renaissance Man. I've wanted this one for quite a while, but it's hard to get in Europe. But I got lucky and was able to pick it up in a math trade at Essen this year. Although, unfortunately, I still haven't gotten a chance to play it yet, but I just love the idea of building your perfect Renaissance Man with this whole, like, card pyramid mechanism where, um, you know, guys stand on the shoulders of previous guys and learn from their learning. I, I, I don't know much about it, but I think it could be really, really cool. Looking forward to giving it a go. Renaissance Man. Ah, here's a couple. I backed this on Kickstarter just because, I'll be honest, I'm shallow. The art is so gorgeous. It is such a beautiful looking game. I absolutely love this artist. Um, and I, I have, we have yet to play the game yet. And actually, I'm a little bit worried about it because it looks like it, it, while it is a fancy smancy card game, all about players trying to um, oh, basically manipulate the queue outside the palace because everybody in the kingdom wants to get into the ball. And actually, um, players are throwing, I think, competing balls at the same time. And everybody wants to get into our balls. And um, that doesn't sound... Um uh, all right, and uh, we, we are basically trying to manipulate the queue, only letting the people in who are really famous, keeping other people out, or sending them off to our other players' ball. Um, looks really cool. It might be a little bit more mean-spirited than Jen I like, but I have to admit, I mean, I, I just couldn't help myself. The art was so gorgeous. All righty, here's a few more. Ah, Tiny Epic uh, Defenders. I have done a run-through for this. You can check that out. This is an awesome, awesome game. Actually, because of some stuff I won't go into in this particular video, I've actually been I've played this now a few times while Jim was gone solo to remind myself of just how much fun this is. And this is a lot of fun. Really, really enjoy it. You can watch my run-through of the prototype I did for the Kickstarter campaign to learn more. Alrighty, Baker Speed. Oh, this was actually um, another gift. I'd actually engaged in a trade with somebody, and they sent their game along. I sent my game to them, and they also just threw this into the box because they're awesome. Um, I've totally forgotten who it was, but I will put a thank you right there on the screen. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I do so many trades. I've lost track. I should have looked it up before I did the film. But this is a real-time um, competitive game where, uh, with, uh, where players are investigating Sherlock Holmes-style mysteries and rolling dice as fast as possible possible to solve the crimes. I don't know if it's any good, but man, I love the idea of it. Can't wait to give Baker Street a try. Ah, Machi Koro. And uh, let's see, this is an earlier Japanese version of it, although it, um, you know, there, there is English on the card, so it's definitely playable. I'll be honest, um, I've had this for a while now. Gosh, feels like almost a year. And I've never done a run-through for it because Jen and I just did not enjoy it much at all. We just thought it was way too simple, way too shallow. I mean, neat, well-designed, but just you know, so beyond gateway that I mean, you know, in, in the uh, simpler arena, we just didn't enjoy it. Particularly because it seems like it's really designed to work well with more players. Because there's lots of interaction between players with players stealing from each other. And with only two, it really felt like it just didn't work. But we have long been informed that the uh, expansion for it, uh, the Harbor expansion, is really supposed to improve the quality of the gameplay quite a bit. So I've never gotten rid of it because I've been waiting for the expansion. And actually, Jen will be bringing that expansion with her back from the United States. So hopefully, we'll be giving this another go soon. All right, moving on up. Let's see. Eight Minute uh, Empire Legends, another game from the awesome uh, Ryan... Lockett, who does all the design and the art on his games. Don't know much about it. It's a very simple eight minutes, in theory, uh, area control game with gorgeous art. Maybe we'll like it, maybe we won't. I got this because the voters demanded it in a recent What Game Should I Get um, poll. 
Dig Mart. I picked this up at Essen. Don't know much about it. I really like the graphic design of it, the look of it. It's the whole notion of running um, competing mining operations on Mars. And you can see there's just uh, stacks of tiles. And you never know when you go digging what you're going to find. Could be cool. Haven't given it a try yet, but looking forward to it. Fantasy Frontier. I have done a run through for this. It's a very, very, it's a pretty fun, fast playing, uh, light steam or lightly steampunkish exploration game where players are searching through a new world setting up towns and riding around in zeppelins um you can watch my run through for more though neat game I have also done a run-through for Let Them Eat Trip, which is a very, very... Well, you can play it two ways. You can play a really light, family-friendly game that you could play with little kids. If I ever have little kids over, this is the game we're going to bring them out and play because it's all about... Uh, it's a tile land game where you're trying to ensure your fish don't get eaten by the sharks. But they're friendly sharks because they've got skipper hats, as you can see. But there's also a more... Uh, a heavier variant that comes with the game so that adults can have fun playing it too. It's a fairly neat game. Uh, Let Them Eat Trip. Have already done a run-through for it? Ah, uh, Salted Doom Rock. I have wax Rhapsodic about this game so many times. I'm not going to do it again now because you can go watch my run through, but this is an excellent, excellent game. It just barely missed my top 10 of 2015. Uh, yeah, it's like number 11 or 12. It's so good. Check out the run through for more. Switching hands. All right, Oddball Aeronauts. This box is actually empty because I'm, I'm using a different box. The game itself is actually out in the glove compartment of my car because this is the game we keep with us in the car at all times. So whenever we're on the road, we've got a fun little fast game we can play anywhere, anytime. You can watch my run through for more, but that's Oddball Aeronauts. Tessin, oh, I really need to get this to the table. It's a real-time competitive card laying game, kind of like a uh, jab boxing, but you know, very, very different theme. All about oh, there's no art here, but it's um, all about shoguns going out and collecting wild animals to make the uh, emperor happy. And um, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm looking forward to giving it a go. That's all I can say at this point about Tessin. And archaeology was another gift. I get surprising amount of gifts. And again, I'm I'm sorry, I totally forgotten who gave me the gift. I will put their name right here um, for for all to see. And say, but I will say thank you very very much. Um, they sent this to Jen the last time she was in the states, and we haven't actually gotten a chance to play it yet. But apparently, it is a very well loved older card game all about being archaeologist. But at this point, that's all I know. Really need to get that to the table. Let's see here. Ah, the Front 9. This is my prototype. And this is actually a very, very limited print run game all about designing golf courses, which you know is not a subject matter I particularly care about. But it turns out this game is really, really fun. Uh, you can see my run through for more. And uh, that's it for Front 9, Steam Donkey. I went ahead and on a whim backed this on Kickstarter because I really loved the uh, art style. Basically, you're running a seaside resort in a steampunk world trying to make all the tourists is happy. That's all I know. I haven't gotten a chance to play it yet, but looking forward to Steam Donkey. Ah, agreed. This was another one that just barely missed my top 10 of 2015. Excellent, excellent game from designer Donald X. Vaccarino, he of Dominion fame. And if you'd like to know more, you can check out my run through. You guessed it. Okay. And then finally, up here, Arg. I just finished doing the entire filming of all of this thing in one take and then as i was putting everything back away i noticed ah, i skipped two so jumping back in i have to use the youtube editor i hate the youtube editor but say la vie uh because i really should mention paperback which also made my top 10 of the year excellent excellent deck building game you can check out my run through for more but i just was remiss in not actually pointing out how lovely this is as a cross between dominion and scrabble neat neat game and wonderful as a cooperative experience keltus i don't know the keltus the the, the virtual spiel or dice game i don't know anything about this it was sent to me as a gift from um one of my biggest fans uh uh uh, the King of Pain, Michael, I can't think of his last name. Oh, Michael, I'm so sorry. But actually, I'm going to mention him a few more times over the course of this video. But anyway, Michael, again, thank you for Keltus. Uh, looks like it could be cute. Don't know much about it. And now back to our already filmed program. Oh, my gosh. What do we got? We've got Murano. All right.
I've done a run through for this as well from Inca and Marcus Brand, the designers of Village, which is an awesome, awesome game. This is a very, very cool game as well. And, uh, you know, it's a, a very fun, interesting Rondell Euro style game, all about um, trying to make uh, emissaries happy by, you know, hitting a whole bunch of secret objectives. Really neat game while building up the, um, the Venetian Isle of Murano to create, you know, the glass blowing capital of the world, basically. You can check out my run through for more, though. That was, oh, Murano. Oh my gosh, that was one of four shelves. Three more to go. 13 minutes. They are actually making good time. Let's keep going. Getting down low. I'm so old. All righty. Hoyuk. Not going to spend much time talking about this. I did a run through of a prototype last year. And actually, a few weeks ago, I did a run through of the new expansion for it. This is a very, very cool, very unique tile laying game. Um, with uh, it, it, It's just very cool, very dynamic, very different. Really enjoyed a lot, but you can check out either of the run-throughs I've done for more. Let's see, then we've got Progress, Evolution of Technology. I did a run-through for this. This is a very, very neat uh, card game all about building um, the ultimate tech tree. This is a game where, you know, I mean, a lot of times in Civ games you have a, a, you know, a big complex tech tree and that's part of the game. This game is all about the tech tree as you build your civilization focusing only on technological breakthroughs that stand on the shoulders of previous technological breakthroughs. Very cool game. Versailles, from the same designer. It, this, these, all three of these games, um, Progress, Versailles, and Praetor are all from designer Andre Novak. He had a very good year. He put out three excellent Euro games. This is another Rondell, Ring Around the Rosy style game where the Rondell gets turned into a board. Although in this Rondell, you have, um, there's intersections, so you can go in different directions. Neat game all about building the Palace of Versailles. Check out the run through for more. Praetor. Ah, um, this is a really cool game. It's a worker placement game um, where your workers go, um, grow old and as they work for you more and they get older, they also get wiser and more experienced and can do better stuff for you. But eventually they get so old that they have to retire. And, um, but, but if you can retire them early enough, you can score a lot of bonus points for taking good care of your workforce. A lot of really clever ideas in this game. But you can check out the run-through for more, Praetor, and I've also done a run-through for Kanban. This did make my top 10 of 2015 from Vita Lasarda. Awesome, awesome, super heavy, super... I'm not going to say complex, it's actually a really streamlined, even though it looks incredibly complex. Look at this board. It looks like the most complicated board game in history, but it's actually a really smooth playing, once you get your head around it, game all about manufacturing automobiles in a factory and trying to be the best darn middle manager you ever saw, while always working hard to please your boss, Sandra over there, who's watching over your shoulder every step of the way. Neat, neat game. Check out the run through. All righty. Uh, let's see. Ugh. Super Motherload. I just did a run through for this just this week. Uh, very fast, hang, light, kind of gateway ish uh, deck builder game. Um, oh, oh, and there's no game art, so you'll have to check out the run through for more. But it's all about um, mining for minerals on Mars. Very quick, very smooth, awesome playing game. Shadowrun Crossfire. I have talked about this a lot. You can check out my run through for more. I've actually done two completely separate run throughs for this game now. Um, this is the best game of 2015. Bar none, by far. Absolutely love this game. Um, I, I, I can't say I'm a big fan of the theme, you know, the whole cyberpunk future fused with um, fantasy, but this is a incredibly challenging, very punishing, just fair warning, cooperative deck builder game with um, permanence, where the more you play, the more experience points you earn, so that the more your character levels up, so you get more and more special abilities. Amazing game. I'm not going to spend any more time talking about it, even though it is the best of 2015, because I've talked about it in my best of 2015 video. I've done two completely separate run-throughs for it. It just um, defies description. I, I, I can't put into words just how great I we love love Shadowrun Crossfire. We've played it 30 over, I've played it over 30 times now, and I'm not even remotely tired of it yet. Great, great game. Okay, moving on. Kemble's Cascade. This recreates classic 80s uh, shoot 'em ups like Galaga and Defender and um, um, Xevious and all that. I've done a run through for it. Very, very cool game. Fast, fun, easy to play, um, and uh, very enjoyable. Tragedy Looper. I've done a run through for this. This is basically what would happen if um, 
the, uh, the kids of Mystery Inc., you know, Scooby and the gang, were time travelers and were constantly going back in time trying to solve mysteries and murders. Um, but, you know, it's crossing that with Groundhog Day because every time they fail to, to um, catch the murderer, the whole thing rewinds and they get another attempt while one player controls the dark forces of fate and tries to stop them every step of the way. It's a very clever game, really creative, really original, but you can check out my run through for more. Oh, I'm going to I'm snap back up now. Okay, my knees are getting sore there. Temporum, I just did a run-through for this the other day from Donald X. Vaccarino. A very, very cool time travel game. You're actually trying to screw with the temporal timeline so that you create the perfect world where you rule over everything. Neat, fast, light, fun. You know, in the same kind of vein as Dominion, but with a really cool theme and some very interesting twists. That is Temporum. Ah, race for the roll for the galaxy. The... Dice-based sequel to Race for the Galaxy. I've already done a run-through for this. You can go check out more. But this is the number two game of 2015. It is absolutely excellent. It is just fantastic. Check out the run-through. I'm just going to leave it at that. Number two game of the year. All righty. Ah, Subdivision. And, um, right, right, right. This is the um, sequel to Suburbia, which is another game about building, um, you know, subdivisions in a neighborhood. A wonderful, very cool, very clever puzzle game um, where each player is trying to puzzle out their own subdivision. Really like it a lot. I think this one also made my top 10 of the year, but you can check out my run through for more or my top 10 video of 2015 for that matter. Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Um, Bezier Games, they had a great year this year because this also made my top 10. This is really the spiritual, the true spiritual sequel to Suburbia because it, um, it, instead of building a suburb out of tiles, you're building a castle out of tiles. But, um, and that just adds so much warmth and um, character to the game. It's a lot of fun. Check out my run through for more. All righty. Ah, here's one I haven't done a run through for. Wildcatters. Oh my god, this box is ridiculously heavy. Now, I had actually passed on Wildcatters originally because... Let me just put this down, it's too heavy. Because it's uh, officially requires at least three players, but um, the designer recently contacted me explaining how he's come up with a variant that makes it work well with two. I read the rules for it, thought it sounded really fantastic, and so I've now got a copy, and I can't wait to find out if it works out well for two. And Panthelos. Um, this one is from one of my favorite designers, Bernd Eisenstein. Um, you know, I love Polyphonies, love Pax. Great, great guy. And this looked really good. This is a dice-based worker placement game where you are trying to build up an antiquities-era city and you know, use dice to you know, fulfill the needs of your people. But uh, you also, your, your civilization is under attack by big, gigantic, scary titans. And so you have to build your own titans to fight these uh, enemy titans off, in addition to all the more normal, traditional Euro-style civilization stuff. Could be cool. Looking forward to trying it when Jen gets back. Panthelos. Athlas. This game joins that rarest of rarities. This is a straight-up tactical skirmish war style game that Jen and I actually enjoyed. We actually like this quite a bit. I'm hoping to do a run-through for it very soon. But the crux of it is, you can see it's you know a, a grid-based style thing. It's um. What would you call it? It's a capture the flag. There are three flags on the board, and the first player to be able to get the majority of them and hold them wins. And, of course, you're moving your, um, you know, your pieces around, kind of chess style. Each piece has different powers and whatnot, and you know, you're trying to get the upper hand. The thing that makes Jen and I love this game, though, is before the game starts, the first half of the game is you building your units. You actually have this, everybody has this gigantic deck, two players, I mean. Both players have this gigantic deck of cards that you can mix and match to, to customize and build your own, you know, flying, death-dealing, aquatic, um, jumping, leaping, sprinting, um, fireball breathing, you know, creatures. And the more powerful you make them, the fewer you can have on the board. We liked this a lot. We were very, very surprised. I'm thinking I'm probably going to be doing a run through within the next couple weeks for Atlas Duel of Divinity. Orléans, this is also in my top 10. I think this was number five, maybe, or something like that. Great, great game. Um, and... Uh, Oh boy, I'm starting to get tired. We're at 22 minutes. You know what? I think I'm just going to leave it as this is an amazing game, easily in the top 10. A very, very fun, fast playing work replacement slash bag builder. And if you want to know what that means, you can go check out the run through for one of the best games of 2015's Orleans. 
Cubist. This is a game all about building, using dice, rolling dice, and stacking them up to match certain patterns to create abstract works of art. And when you're not using your dice for that, you're using the dice to actually build the museum that those abstract art pieces will go in. I've done a run through for it. You can check that out. And that's all I got to say right now because I'm trying to get a speed it up. I'm going. I'm taking too long. Too long. Too long. That's Cubist. Finca. All right. This is a weird one. I've had this for years. We like it. It's a fun, fast, light, breezy rondelle game about um, collecting fruit and then delivering. It's a, oh, actually, thinking about it, I guess it's a pickup and deliver game that we actually like. Although it's really just about the delivery because the pickup happens on the rondelle. It's a neat, neat game. Um, I haven't done a run through for it yet because this was actually one of the many games. There's about 30 games I own that are back in the attic in England. And my voter said, we want to see Finca. Bring it back from England. And so I did. And then they've never actually asked me to do a run through for it. So it's it's here, but it's actually a really neat game. Very much enjoy Finca. Ah, the Golden Ages. Just did a run through for this the other day. Um, really, really cool um, civilization building game. I, I still need to play it a couple more times before I can determine whether this is actually in the top 10 of 2015. It's a, it's a candidate. In April, I'm going to be revisiting my top 10 for 2015, and this might push its way onto the list. It's an excellent, excellent civilization building game from you know, antiquities right up to modern day. You can check out my run through for more. I have not played Expedition Northwest Passage yet, but I'm very, very excited because it's all about trying to find the Northwest Passage. You can see players are actually building, you know, the uh, Arctic seascape um, and, and, you know, basically uh, as kind of like a puzzle trying to maneuver the, around these pieces that they build to and also getting off the ship and getting on dog sleds we to get across the ice flows it looks really really cool i hear it's incredibly heavy a very complex so i'm really excited about expedition northwest passage and jumping up here oh we've got aquasphere i've done a run through for a prototype of this this was stefan feld's big heavy euro of 2015 an excellent excellent game where you control a team a two-man team a scientist and a programmer the programmer over here programs robots to help the scientists over here in the main aquasphere to do all the work he needs to do, score victory points. Neat, neat game. One of Stefan Feld's more thematic games as well, Aquasphere. Check out my run through for more. Lagrangia. This is the number three best game of 2015. I'm just saying it right now. You can watch my um, top 10 video. You can watch my Lagrangia run through. But in a nutshell, or Lagrangia, I believe is the correct pronunciation, players are um, running farms, trying to grow crops, take them off to sell them at market in the city. You know, really, really bog standard stuff. But what makes this game really special is the card play. Absolutely stellar game. Love this one a lot. Check out my run through for more. Lagrangia. Arrgh. Okay. Pandemic the Cure. This is the dice version of Pandemic, and it is excellent. Actually, I'm, I'm not going to say it replaces Pandemic. I mean, Pandemic still provides uh, a deeper, more engaging experience, but this one's a lot of fun. And actually, while at first my original thought was, gosh, I mean, we like this. This is fun, rolling dice instead of drawing cards. Um, but it just doesn't quite have the same oomph as the main game. But then I realized this is probably maybe the ultimate travel dice game. Because it, th this game, I mean, don't be fooled by the size of the box. This condenses down into a very, very small portable bag that you could play anywhere. You know, on, um, you know, on, a, on a dining or at a, at a diner or you know, on the beach or whatever. So we're definitely keeping Pandemic the Cure as a travel game for us, and you can check out my run through for more. Viceroy or Hamitchek. This is a really, really cool card game all about building pyramids of power, matching um, colors and trying to score the most points possible with some of the most amazing art I've ever seen in a card game. Gorgeous looking game, really fun. Really, really, a lot of really cool ideas in this one, the way it plays, its mechanisms. If you'd like to know more though, you can check out my run through. You guessed it, folks. Heroes Wanted. Ah, oh, this game is hilarious. It literally makes us laugh out loud. But at the same time, while playing it, this is a game of motley um, wannabe superheroes trying to save the city from all manner of disasters. Whether it's um, stopping robberies at a bootleg uh, CD factory, or, uh, or you know, or, you know, shutting down a bootleg CD factory, or picking up litter from, or, you know, stopping litter bugs without jaywalking, because of course we're heroes, we can't jaywalk. And the whole point of the game is you mix adjectives and nouns to become interesting, unique villains like the Rubber Genius 
or Danger Computer or whatever. And yeah, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say it's really, really cool that this game also features me as a card. I'm one of the villains in the game. And in the expansion that's coming out this year, Jen is one of the heroes. So that's really awesome too. I well, really enjoy it. Heroes Wanted. Check out my run through for more. Let Isla, I've done a run through for this. This was Stefan Feld's other game of 2015. Although, unlike um, most of his really big heavy ones, this is a fairly quick, light, I would c consider this kind of a gateway game, and a quickie area control with some very, very clever uses of cards where every card you have has um, you know, f several different uses, and for each one you have to decide what's the best strategy. Neat, neat game, all about finding um, long thought experience Stink species on Laisa, Laisa and studying them because we're a bunch of scientists. Neat game. All right. Nations, the dice game. Nations was my number one game. Was it 2013, I think? Well, either 2013 or 2014. And now, Nations Dice Game. Oh, look at that. Signed by the uh, um, designer himself, by uh, Rustin, is an excellent, excellent baby brother to Nations itself. Uh, you know, it really encapsulates everything that makes Nations, which is a very, very cool civilization building game. Um, and, you know, puts in a very, very tight, elegant, fast, fast playing package. And we actually found ourselves enjoying Nations, the dice game, quite a bit. But you can check out my run through for more. Uh, let's see. Run through, run through, run through, run through. I've done run throughs for all of these. Ancient Terrible Things, another really cool dice game that, you know, there's a lot of games out there that, you know, borrow the Yahtzee mechanisms of roll, re roll, re roll, try to get the right hand of dice to do whatever you want to do. In this game, it's kind of like a cartoony version of, what is it? Um, oh, uh, Oh, uh, Heart of Darkness, Heart of Darkness, but with a Cthulhu mythos um, sprinkled on top, but in a, in a very approachable cartoony art style where we are trying to stop Elder Gods from destroying the world by rolling dice. But the thing is, while I said it does borrow Yahtzee-style mechanisms, it does it in a very cool, very unique, very innovative way that put this, that, made, that Jen and I just instantly fell in love with this game. This is one of the few games that right after we played it, Jen said, I want to play it again right now. She enjoyed it that much. That doesn't happen very often. Eminent Domain, an excellent deck building game from Tasty Minstrel. I have to admit, I was always on the fence about the original Eminent Domain, but in this box is also its expansion, which really elevated the game and made it absolutely fantastic. So much so that we definitely, um, it became a keeper with the expansion. Um, and so, but you can check out my run through because I've done a run through of the base game and the expansion to find out more. Goblins vs. Zombie Surprise is not a thick box, it's a little thin one. This is a lovely, charming, uh, game of tower defense. Oh, there's nothing on the back of the box. But you can kind of get an idea from the art. You know, it has this kind of lovely, cartoony, almost childlike innocence to the art. As um, goblins, are us as players, we run goblin villages trying to ho hold off hordes of advancing zombies. And you can check out my run through for more, but in a nutshell, you could, this could have been rethemed to Plants vs. Zombies, and it could have been Plants vs. Zombies, the board game, or the card game, I should say. Very, very neat. You can play it competitively or cooperatively. Jen and I enjoy it both ways. That is Goblins vs. Zombies. Epic Resort. What am I at? I'm at 30 minutes. Doing good. All right. I've done a run through for this one. I've done a run through for the prototype. The final shipping game, oh my gosh, looks so gorgeous. This is a deck builder about running a tropical resort for fantasy heroes. You know, the, the dwarf and the wizard and, uh, you know, and the thief. They all come here, they hang out in their swimwear, just trying to relax. But wouldn't you know, bad guys show up trying to destroy the resort. And we, as resort owners, have to decide, are we going to try and take care of the bad guys ourselves? Or are we going to bother our guests and have them help us? But of course, if we do that, they're not going to give us a very good review. <laughs> Um, because they, you know, they came here to relax, but instead they had to fight or maybe even um, get killed. Really clever, entertaining, charismatic um, deck builder game. Epic Resort, check out the run through for more. Oh, coming down. Let's see, here's some I have not run through. Limes. You know what? I don't know anything about this game other than it looks like a very um, bright, colorful, attractive tile laying game. I it, I just threw it into an order to push myself over a limit. It was it was so cheap. It was is practically an impulse buy. I know nothing about this, but really need to play Limes soon. Two games from Uwe Rosenberg, uh, Patchwork, which I'm going to be doing a run through for pretty quick, and also Gold Ahoy, which I'm going to be trying to run through both of these in the next week or so. This is a really um, wait, is this from Uwe as well? No, this one is not. I'm sorry. Patchwork is from Uwe. This is from um, uh, Stefan 
Her Hermringhaus. They're both from Lookout Games, though. This is a very, very light two-player only tile lane game of trying to collect treasure. It's, it's cute. Um, we, we, we thought it was kind of fun, although I think this is going to be better for um, playing with kids because it's really light. And, uh, but Patchwork is also a fairly light gateway game. This one I do run for, this will be the second run through I've done for quilting games, oddly enough. Uh, and, but it's really interesting. It's, uh, it, it's kind of like almost Tetris because you're buying all these weird Tetris shaped uh, quilt pieces and trying to build the perfect quilt to score points before time runs out. So it's, a, it's very much a puzzly, neat little game. Akrotiri, I just did a run-through for this a couple days ago. You can go check out the run-through, but it is an excellent, excellent tile-laying exploration game um, with hidden objectives and a lot of really cool mechanisms. As a two-player only game, like it a lot, Akrotiri. All righty, Edo. Oh, I got to sit down now. I am surprised. I could have sworn this was on my list last year, but I went and checked, and it wasn't. This is a really, but I have done a run through for it, so you can check it out. In a nutshell, the, this is a game about, you know, traveling around, um, um, picking up resources. Actually, interestingly, this is also a pick up and deliver game. I always go on about how I hate pick up and deliver games, but we liked this game. Or actually, I should say, the base game we thought was okay, but the base game with the expansion became something really, really cool. Um, but the crux of it is, you're issuing orders to your guys who are running around picking stuff up and delivering it to build things. And it's this core mechanism of these order tiles you have that can be played in many different configurations that really makes us enjoy Edo. But you can check out the run through for more. Escape Zombie City. I have done, I, I have done videos for this and for the original Escape. Uh, Escape was one of, is, is just outside of my top 10 of all time, Escape Curse of the Temple which there it is right there. And this is effectively, a, this is a sequel, but I consider it almost an expansion because it takes all the core ideas of Escape, Curse of the Temple, and adds zombies, which are a really cool addition because now, in, in the original game, the zombie, or the, the zombie, the, the dungeon that you're exploring was passive. It just waited for you to come to it. In this game, the zombies come after you, and that's a really cool addition that I enjoyed quite a bit, but you can check out the run-through for more of Escape Zombie City. And speaking of, how about Zombie 15? Another real-time zombie escape game with a even though it's the same theme as escape zombie city the gameplay between these two could not be more different and if you'd like to know more you can check out the run through i've done for it uh, but the only thing i'll mention right now is um if ever anybody says yeah the game is cool but the setup for it is terrible they're wrong they're so so wrong the setup is super easy for this game um and if you'd like to know more you can, you can go check out my run through Alrighty. um let's see alchemist another one of my top 10 games of the year from CG Games, uh, Mattis Kotri. This is a very, very cool game, which much like XCOM over there, requires a digital app to play. In this game, we are alchemists trying to discover the secrets of the universe by mixing together different alchemical components, and the app tells us if we succeed or fail. It's a really neat game, incredibly heavy, um, and actually, as a two-player game, kind of mean. There's, a, there's almost a little bit too much attacking and blocking for us, but we still like the core mechanisms, the puzzling deduction of trying to figure out how to make these potions a lot. of al So that's Alchemist. Uh, Mysterium, or Tmiche de Mostro is a very, very cool game. This is Dixit. This is a party-style game, but you can, it plays well with two, where some players are paranormal investigators trying to find out why this haunted manor is you know, beset by ghostly visions. And one player is the ghost, who appears in dreams trying to... because it, the, the player who's the ghost is not allowed to speak at the table. So they can only communicate to the other players through dream cards that, um, if they play the right ones, they can give valuable clues to the investigators so the investigators can save the day. Really clever game, very, very popular. Not widely available yet, but it will be coming out um, in uh, 2015 uh, as Mysterium in English. But anyway, in the meantime, you can check out my run through for more. We're almost done, folks. 36 minutes, and here we are. Uh, see, I've, uh, these were all here last year, except for Myth. Now, you may have seen my run through for Myth. Uh, it was kind of infamous, one of my most ranty ones I've ever done, because while the core game of Myth is brilliant, uh, you know, there's so many really wonderfully neat, cool gameplay mechanisms. It's a cooperative um, adventure game where players get together and uh, uh, you, you use card-driven gameplay to fight off endless hordes of bad guys. It does so many things really well, but when it shipped last year, it did so many things so poorly. The rules were terrible, the, the, you know, and really kind of incomplete. It was, it was basically rushed to market a little too soon. I, and, um, and I basically complained about it quite a bit in my run-through. 
Um, but I've been holding on to it ever since because I have high, high hopes. And in fact, um, in this, they, they've now redone the rules. They're, the developers are constantly you know, putting out new stuff. They've redone some of the art, or I'm sorry, not the art, the cards to make them a little bit more uh, player friendly. And they've set it up so the players can print them out themselves. And I, again, I remain optimistic because the core game is brilliant. I just want all the support um, around it to make it uh, play as smooth as it should. And so that's why I'm holding on to it, waiting to return to Myth. Dragon Scroll. Oh, I have not played this game yet. I picked it up at Essen, and I'll be honest, I picked it up. I'm not too ashamed to say. I picked it up because... Look at these characters. This is who you get to play. These cute, adorable, gorgeous dragons. Uh, there's four, four different ones because you can play up to four players. The, um, the, I mean, these things are just stunning. I mean, they're so cute. And we will not focus, will we? No, we won't. All right, there we go. Ah, well, even without focus, you can see how detailed and lovely they are. Um, I, haven't, I have no idea how well the game plays. It's got this kind of cool tower of death that the dragons use to breathe fire and take out bad guys all around the land. I'm looking forward to giving it a try, but we'll see how good it is ultimately. Haven't gotten to it to the table yet, though. Dragon scroll. Oh, now i got to stand back up, but we're in the final stretch, folks. Last shelf. Argon, now I've got a butt in again because in my main... Filming, I missed the Capitals, which is tightly in here. There we go. And it's kind of a little beat up, unfortunately. But that's okay, because I'm never trading this, because this is an excellent city building game. Tile game. It's kind of like, I mean, I've, I've talked about Suburbia earlier, it's a, which is a great tile city building game. And Capitals is kind of the same thing, but much, much heavier. There's a lot more going on in this game. A lot of things to consider, um, you know, economy and, um, you know, technological breakthroughs and all that. Really, really clever game. Very long, but a lot of fun. And we really like it a lot. But you can check out the run through to see more of the capitals and then continuing on okay pillars of the uh, earth builders duel this was another gift um, given to me and again um, from uh, what is it uh, michael koenig king of pain who sent this along to help me out with my quest to finish a run through do a run through for every single steffenfeld game in the world i have this one and then I also have Rum and Pirates, which I picked up in a trade at Essen. I do these two run-throughs, and then finally this run-through, Dribble Fielder, an insanely rare, incredibly hard-to-get game, which again was provided to me as a gift. Thank you again. There's the name of the uh, gift giver on screen, because I'm sorry, so, oh, so many names. I really should have made a list of all these. But if I can complete these three games, I will be the only video reviewer in existence to have given 100% coverage of Steffenfeld games. So look Look forward to seeing those run-throughs in the next month or so. Let's see here. Clinic. Or right, what are they? Uh, this is a card game version of Pillars of the Earth, which was a board game from a very famous Ken Follett uh, mega novel and also miniseries. I played it once, and I thought it was pretty cool, but I remember Jen not liking it, and so I traded it away, but I couldn't remember why Jen didn't like it, but I picked it up again, or, well, thanks again to Michael, I've gotten it again, so I can do the run-through. And I wouldn't be surprised if the next time we play it, Jen actually does enjoy it. Uh, Rum and Pirates, we played this once a long time ago, thought it was okay, but really needs more than two to come alive. But you're basically moving your pirates around this kind of shanty town, trying to pick stuff up, but also, you know, get more rum, but also be the first to get back to the pirate ship to bunk up for the night and get a good night's sleep. Clinic. I've done a run-through for this. You can check that out. Um, oh, this is my prototype version that I got for the run-through. And, uh, but, you know, I like the game so much that we actually kept the prototype around for our shipping game. This is all about building hospitals, trying to build the best one you can to service the most people. Very thematic, really, really cool. Um, really enjoyed this one a lot. You can check out the run-through. And then Dribble Fielder, I mentioned a second ago, the long-lost, impossible-to-find Steffenfeld game, and also Wolfgang Panning. Uh, and it is based on um, soccer. And it's actually a kid's game, although the game does come with rules that make it a bit more complex. And I'm, I, my, my, I'm, I'm only doing it for 100% completion. I have no idea if the game will be good or not. But you can check out um, that run-through coming soon. Destination Neptune. I have done a run-through for this. This is a very, very cool um, game all about... Well, how do they put it? Um, let's see. Envisioning Humanity's Next Century in Space. This is... 
Uh, this portrays, I love this, an optimistic vision of commercial space exploration in the next century. And this is um, s this is not science fiction. This is science fact. There of science fiction, which is all about the reality of our near future as we, you know, slip the uh, the bonds of Earth and start exploring our solar system and, um, you know, trying to make money doing it. Really, really clever game. Lots of neat stuff. A very, very misunderstood game as well. But if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my run-through for it. Oh, I'm so close. What's he building in here? I've had, you know, I, I backed this on Kickstarter. I'll be honest. Um, based off the strength of Tom Vassell's enthusiastic preview he did for it. He raved and raved about how awesome this is as a neat worker placement game um, where players are mad scientists, you know, sending their minions around to do various tasks to help build their doomsday machine while also trying to put on appearances of being a mad scientist while also preparing an escape vehicle. I love the idea of it, and um, so I, I pretty much backed it based off Tom's, you know, glowing praise. I have heard nothing since then but how it's actually not that good. Um, you know, that it, it, you know it, it, it's a little bit road. It kind of plays itself. It, it, um, and so I'm a bit worried now, but I've yet to play it. But I need to give it a try sometime. What's he building in there? Pay Dirt is a very, very cool game with arguably maybe the best... Um, there are certainly some of the best components ever, probably in the running for best game components of 2015. This is a neat game. I've done a run through for it about um, running a mining operation, a gold mining operation in Alaska in modern day. And, um, you know, upgrading your machinery, repairing it when it breaks down, hiring employees, and dealing with disasters that pop up every once in a while. It's a very, very cool game. Uh, it's from the designer of Alien Frontiers. This is his follow up game. It did its heart. It's an auction engine building game and we enjoy it quite a bit. Pater, check out the run through for more. <sighs> Johari. This is another one I'm hoping to do a run through for in the next week or two from designer Carlo Lavizzi who did the excellent, excellent Oddville. I've done a run through for that and, and if you watch it you know how much we loved Oddville. We've only played this once and I think we need to play it again before, um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a cool game about being um, gem merchants in, uh, in Johari, the world famous jewelry market of Jaipur. And what's interesting about it more than anything else is, you know, we're, we're trading in all these different gems and there's all kinds of different dignitaries coming through the market who have different things they want. And so the game's constantly in motion. There's constantly stuff changing up. But the cool central thing is a lot of the gems in this game are counterfeit. And so you can, you really push your luck and collect those counterfeit gems and try to sell them off as real ones. But if the, um... Oh, I forget what they're called, but if you're caught doing that, it will hurt you. And so I really, really like the, we, we really enjoyed the kind of push your luck nature of Johari, but I think I need to play, we've only played it once. I probably need to play it again before I do a run through for it, but that'll be coming soon. All right, that's it, folks. Actually, no, there's three more way up here. And um, now these three, I don't know if I'm going to really, if we're going to enjoy any of them. All three of these, The Witcher Adventure Games, Sentinel Tactics, and Star Wars Imperial Assault, I got a, in, in a recent mass game purchase because my Rotto run-through voters said, these are the ones we want you to cover. And so I figured, what the heck, I'll give it a try. The Witcher is from designer Ignacy uh, Tripchek, who we all really love, love a lot of his stuff, love Stronghold, love Preta Porter. And this is, my understanding, kind of a very light, atmospheric, Ameritrashy without the Ameritrash gameplay um, adventure game set in the Witch universe. The Witcher is a very popular series of books and computer games. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Haven't tried it yet. I've heard it's really, really light. It's a very fast racing game. I wonder if we will enjoy this more than Runebound, which it seems like this tries to scratch the same itch. And we really like Runebound a lot, so it'll be interesting to see The Witcher. Sentinel Tactics is a, a uh, what do you call it, um, a tactical skirmish game with superheroes and supervillains. And I really have my doubts about it, but man, um, Joel Eddy, who I respect and admire, he's a really sharp cookie, he raved about this. And it seems like it has some very, very cool card play elements in it too. So we're willing to give it a try, plus any game where the instruction manual is given to you in the form of a comic book, uh, you know, that, that can't be all bad. So. We'll see you soon about Sentinel Tactics, Flame of Freedom, and finally, this big monster, ugh, um, Star Wars Imperial Assault, which is effectively Descent 2.0 with Star Wars on top. This is a one player is the Dungeon Master, the other player, you know, playing the Imperials, the other player is the Defenders. Everybody has their own goals they're trying to achieve as you run around grid-based things and roll dice trying to kill each other. If you watched my run through of Descent, you know Jen and I didn't enjoy that. I have real doubts that we're going to enjoy this, but I'm willing to give it a try because, like everybody, I, I love Star Wars, so who knows? 
Ah, fingers crossed, basically. But anyway, that's it, folks. That was the 77, if I counted correctly, new games that have been added to our collection in over the over the core between in the last 365 days. Questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you again in a year's time when I do this for 2016. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.